I just got some personal news. I am leaving my position at RISD and I'm moving to Utah this summer. I know, I never thought either of those two things would ever happen. When I moved here to Boston, I think I moved here in 2004. When I moved here 16 years ago, I thought I was gonna live here for the rest of my life, pretty much. And I thought I was gonna be at RISD for the rest of my life. But I have learned a lot over the past years. We started Art Prof in 2014 is when I had the idea. I brought on the TAs at 2015 and we launched the site in 2017. And you know what I realized, you guys? Art Prof needs me more than RISD. Because the RISD students, they're on the RISD campus. They have so many faculty to help them, to support them. They have resources, they have facilities. The RISD students are gonna be fine, okay? They really will. They are well supported. In my opinion, you guys need me more. You really do, because who else is gonna be your linear perspective police? Who is gonna bother you when you guys don't draw backgrounds or when you tell me with a guilty face that you didn't do any thumbnail sketches and you didn't brainstorm, you didn't think about it in advance, you need me here to bother you guys about that type of stuff. I just think that there's a huge population of people out there in the world who need me more than the RISD students. Now, let me explain this a little bit. This was not an easy decision for me to make. The moving to Utah, that actually was not difficult because we have family there. That is actually one of the compelling reasons. Actually, it's probably the compelling reason why we are moving to Utah but it was hard for me to leave academia because academia is where I've been my whole life. I've been teaching at RISD since 2007. So I've been at RISD for 13 years. And for a few years before that, I was also in academia. I was teaching at School of the Museum of Fine Arts. I was at Lesley University. I also spent four years at Wellesley College. So I've been in academia forever and ever and ever. It really was all I knew before I started at Art Prof. And I'm leaving academia. Now here's the thing, guys. I have a voice in my head that I have not been able to get rid of. It's still there. I, I Most of the time I can snuff it out. 99% of the time I can do it. But 1% of the time, that little voice in my head says, Clara, you're leaving academia because you couldn't make it you could not succeed in academia because you were not good enough. And if you were better, you would have a full-time tenured professor position right now. I only think this about 1% of the time. Okay, most of the time I'm totally fine and I'm really happy to be doing what I'm doing. But that was my dream. When I got out of graduate school, I had all these goals in mind and you guys know I love teaching. That is a no brainer. That is not difficult for me. And my dream was to be hired as a full-time professor, get tenure, and love my life in academia, okay? I wanted to do that more than anything. Now, I don't know if you guys probably know the difference here because I know it's really confusing, but when you're full-time in academia, it's a very different life than when you're part-time the way I am, okay? So I, I am part-time faculty adjunct, basically is what I was at RISD for 13 years. And when you're part-time, it's a different life, guys. There's no stability. I never knew semester to semester if I was going to be renewed. And it's really stressful, especially because I have a family. It's not like I'm single and I'm totally by myself. And you know something, guys? My situation in academia, this might not be obvious, it has only gotten worse and it's only gotten more unstable, which does not make a lot of sense 
Because you'd think, okay, the more experience you have, the more you're desirable <laughs> because you're better at what you do. So I'm a much better teacher than I was in 2007. Oh my God. <laughs> there are so many dumb things I did when I was a beginning professor. I'm a much better teacher now. I think I am. <laughs> I was a long time ago. And yet my position in academia has gotten worse. It's gotten less stable. And I found in the last few years, I really was begging for work. I was begging and when I got stuff, it was scraps. And it was very, very challenging. It was really hard and it was not good for me in terms of my confidence because you, you start to think for a while, you know, if I was better, I would have been hired by now. And I'll tell you guys for the last 15 years, every single year, I would peruse the College Art Association job board because that's where they post all of the openings for the academic positions every single year. And I applied to every single one that I was qualified for. Some years I got no interview, nothing. <laughs> I didn't even get past round one. The very few times that I got past round one and actually had an interview and it was Skype or it was in person or something like that, I didn't get past that round. And let me tell you, when you apply for a position in academia, it's multiple rounds. It's like, it's probably like four rounds. There's like a campus visit. There, there's, it's very, very involved. It's not a small thing. But I realized after a while, I was like, I'm not going to get this. My ships are sailing. And every single year, I was like, those ships are moving farther and farther away. And I know it's different for everybody. Okay, there's case by case situation. I definitely know a lot of people who did get full time positions later in life. And that's fine. But you know what I started realizing, you guys? the people who were getting those interviews because they make it public because they have presentations and stuff that people can attend on campus. The people that were getting those positions, they were much younger than me. They had way less experience, both in terms of exhibitions and in terms of teaching experience. And I thought, you know what? I'm not 35 anymore and I'm not fresh out of grad school. I'm older and I've been around. And in academia, that really makes your value go down. It's really, really hard. And so I realized, okay, my ship has sailed and this is not getting any better. And I had somewhat of a midlife crisis <laughs> when this started to happen because I realized that, oh my God, none of my goals have been achieved. I'm not a tenured professor. I didn't even have a full-time job, much less be tenured. Because to be tenured, which means you cannot be fired, you, first, you have to get the full-time job first. And then you have to be there for like seven years. And then you have to go through like tenure review and then they give you tenure. So it, it takes a really, really long time, okay? And I was like, oh my God, I can't even get the full-time job, much less tenure. <laughs> this is not happening. I wanted to be a person that was in museum collections. I wanted to show with a gallery representation, not just show in a gallery. And I wanted to show in a New York City gallery and I wanted to win artist grants, okay? And I realized a few years ago, I was like, none of these goals have happened. And this is so depressing to be in a field for that long, over a decade, and not a single thing on that checklist had happened. And it was so depressing. Like, I can't even tell you guys how depressing it was. Thank you guys for all of your comments and your support, because you know what? Th this is a risk for me. Th this is not something that is guaranteed to work out. It's a financial risk because Art Prof is not quite there yet in terms of having a stable foundation. And also I'm leaving academia, which is all I've known pretty much my entire life. And my relationship with art prof and academia, it's been really complicated. I don't know that this is, well, probably has not been obvious to any of you because I only <laughs> started talking about this today, is that I've gotten a lot of crap about art prof from academia and people have really looked down on me for it. And actually 
with my colleagues in academia, I've had to hide art prof. I've had to not talk about it ever, never bring it up. If something happened with art prof, I did not send it to academic affairs to send out in the faculty accomplishments newsletter. And I think a lot of it is people feeling that, okay, number one, it's on YouTube because, oh my God, that's horrible. Being on video and that I was like stooping down to this lower level. And so art prof is not something I've been able to share with my colleagues in academia. There's a few, there's, there's like two that are like my close friends and I, I will talk to them about it. But the thing is in academia, a lot of the times, people like to share their accomplishments. People like to tell each other, oh, in the faculty lounge, oh, I have this show, blah, blah, blah. That, that is very common, but I, I actively hid art prof from my colleagues because I knew I was gonna get crap about it or it'd be like crickets. <laughs> it would be like one thing. I mean, the crickets are almost worse. You, you sort of would rather people tell you to your face that they think it's dumb, but the crickets I think are much, much worse. I mean, of course, I think what's interesting now is because of the global pandemic, everybody's teaching online. And so I've actually been in demand lately because people are saying, wow, you have this figured out. How do we do this? And so I'm hoping I can help more people in that way. But that part has been hard for me, having these two worlds, the art prof world, the academia world, and it has not been easy to live those two lives at the same time because they are at odds with each other. And I, I was sort of getting not so cool vibes about it from my colleagues. Let's see, Louis saying, cheers to your next chapter. You've helped me grow as an artist so much. Ariana says, academic elitism is a yawn. Keep doing your thing. Gem Girl says, the elitism of academia. I'm making you guys cry. Don't do that because I'm not going to cry on camera. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I already cried in front of my students in the spring when I had to leave because I had to tell them because we had to leave campus in the middle of March. I knew I was never going to see them again. So I did tell them. And yeah, that was, that was really, really hard. Um, anyway, here's the thing, guys. My feeling is this is a big risk for me. But when I look at our prof and I look at all of you and what you're making, like literally what you're making, because we have the art prof share shout outs and you guys show me on Instagram, you show me in the Discord. I have like real physical evidence that you guys are learning. And it's like the greatest thing ever. It's like your soul just surges when you see people saying, you know what, I picked up a piece of charcoal for the first time in 15 years, never drew the past 15 years, but now I'm doing it. It's really, really cool. And you know what I love about Art Prof? My world is so much bigger, you guys. It is so big. The number of people I've connected to the people who have reached out to me, it's a really big world for me now. Academia was not like that. Academia was a bubble. It's a little tiny place for a very small percentage of people and a very privileged area. And I will tell you that when you teach at a school like that, it, it's not very diverse and you don't meet a lot of people from different stages and walks of life and yeah, so that I was frustrated with. And you know something, when I started Art Prof, I didn't know that was gonna happen. I did not predict any of this. I didn't predict anything about the community or the connection that I have, you guys, and all the silly things we talk about in Discord, like cake and M&Ms and stuff like that. So I did not know this. And you know what, you guys, in addition to the work you're making, because you should all keep doing that for sure, I get so many messages from you guys, emails and Instagram messages and stuff like that, that, oh God, <laughs> it just gets, so, I mean, I share them with the staff every single week. We have a channel in our Slack group called Testimonials and I always post the most poignant comments that we get every single week. And I get comments from all of you that I never got when I was teaching in academia. And it's just a really different type of thing, the way you guys share your stories with me. I mean, I, I've gotten emails that are like, I'm not joking, 
four paragraphs long, people telling me everything they've gone through. And I thought, wow, if you're willing to share that with me, that really says something. And the stories I get from people are incredible. They're not predictable. And people tell me all the curveballs that life has thrown them and how they come back to art and how they leave. And yeah, it, it's been really, really inspiring for me to see that. And I, I just think that you guys need me more than RISD students. RISD students will be fine. They, they are well taken care of. And I'm so grateful for being part of that community. I love the students and all the relationships I've fostered there. And I will miss the brick and mortar classroom, okay? Because I do love that. Having that in-person interaction with the students and really being down and dirty with them and hands-on in the figure drawing class. But it's time for me to dedicate myself 100% to art prof and leave that part of my life behind. It really, I think, is time for that. Let's see, fearful symmetry says, so happy for you. I was wondering if a follow-up to your perspective video is possible. People cite Scott Robertson's book, but it's so boring. <laughs> Who is Scott Robertson? I've never heard of him before. And please tell me, fearful symmetry, what you mean by follow-up to my perspective video. Are you talking about linear perspective? I think that's what you're talking about. There's so much I want to do. And you guys give me such great video suggestions and I want to keep doing it. So we'll get to all of it. <laughs> it's just, I can't clone myself. That's the problem. Thank you so much to Emily Wilkins and John Egenhofer, very generous saying you support us. So we support you. Marguerite says art mom. Yeah, I used to get that a lot actually at RISD. The students would say, you're my RISD mom. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do your laundry though. <laughs> That's fine. As long as I don't have to pour you a glass of milk. It's okay. Gargi says, I'm so moved, so thankful for your presence. Instead of diving into depression like I tend to, I wake up every morning thinking what I'm going to draw today for the art prof dare. That's amazing. See, I just... I love that. And Gina says, we love you too, Clara. I just recently saw you. I'm glad YouTube is making lives better. Me too. I, I'm really, really happy that I can share this with you guys. So I'm nervous and I'm a little scared and I'm a little <laughs> worried. And I was like seriously getting butterflies in my stomach about to tell all of you because a couple of people in my life have known for a while, obviously, because they've had to, the staff here at Art Prof. They have known plenty about what's going on for a while, but cat's out of the bag now. <laughs> There's no real, I think, taking this back at this point. And it's like, okay, full steam ahead. Let's see what's going on here. Roten Boy says, as much as it is hard leaving an important part of your life behind, I hope you can find more fulfillment in this next part of your life. You know what? Roten boy, I don't think that's possible for me to not find more fulfillment because art prof is one of those projects. Here's the thing. It's the hardest, biggest project I have ever done in my life. Hands down. Like I cannot believe some of the silly, desperate things <laughs> that I have done. Like silly like get down in your hands and knees and scrub the floor <laughs> type of thing <laughs> that has to happen thank you for the super chat Kristoff. they are saying i discovered our prof oh just two weeks ago learned so much you keep me motivated to make art every day oh i'm really really happy to hear that so art prof is the hardest project i've ever done because well there's a couple of reasons one reason is because i'm doing stuff i never did before ever I didn't know how to take apart a tripod, guys. <laughs> My husband was like horrified. First time I took apart a tripod, I totally messed it up. I don't know how you can do that, but you can, apparently. And so when I started Art Prof, I didn't know how to edit video. I didn't know anything about production or sound design or the internet in terms of video and community and stuff like that. And so everything I have done on Art Prof, I learned from scratch. And trust me, I had a lot of help. There are a lot of people who supported me, who did me favors. and But I think the hardest part of it was really coordinating all the people. I mean, I think you guys probably saw 
when I was talking earlier about the grad stream that we did this past week, I mean, we featured over 50 students and over 20 faculty and artists. I mean, just do the numbers. It's like 70 people you have to communicate with. It was crazy. And then at Art Prof, we have obviously our team of teaching artists. We have interns. We have some staff. And it's a lot of people to coordinate because before Art Prof, I was just doing my studio practice by myself in the studio. If I wanted to do something, I just did it. It was like not a big deal. And in the classroom, that's my classroom. That, that's not hard either because it's not like I was co-teaching or anything like that. But the logistics of organizing people and figuring things out. And when we started Art Prof, we had no idea. <laughs> Like we had no idea. We we weren't even doing video. You guys probably don't even know this. When we started our prof, we, we were doing everything with audio. It was crazy. And I think about it now and it's like hilarious for me to consider what we were doing because it was really stupid actually what we were doing. But we worked through all those things to get to where we are now. And it's funny when you guys tell me, I just found you a month ago. I'm like, good. If you found us three years ago, you probably would not be following us anymore because <laughs> our content was like not very well organized. And let's see, Scott is saying, it's impressive how much I pushed through my depression just from art directly from your videos. Went from a psych major to an illustration major in 2021. Wow, that is really, really wonderful. Congratulations on that. Oh, Fearful Symmetry is following up. Yeah, your linear perspective video was really helpful. Scott Robertson's book is basically just lines. The book is titled How to Draw. It's just pages and pages of line exercises. Yeah, typically speaking, that is how linear perspective is usually taught. It's lines and cubes and squares. And it's oh, so boring. You know, when you add Michael Fassbender, everything's interesting. So there you go. Karen, thank you for the super chat. She's saying just came home from a commute. Thanks to all you do. Best of luck. We love you. Thanks for all the help. Yeah, thank you, you guys. I really appreciate all of you being here with me. And I'm so grateful to have all of you here on this journey. And I, I hope you will stick around and see what happens. And so because we are going through, we're going to be going through this transition. I mean, I have to move, which is like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> head hurts sort of thinking about that. I've lived here for a long time, so we accumulated some stuff. And so I have to move. And I think you all know, those of you who have moved, there's a lot of stuff you have to do. And so I'm going to be pretty busy doing that. And also, I think you guys know, I really am the command station <laughs> for all of our live streams. I coordinate all the supplies. I do the scheduling. I put everything together, basically. I do that so that way the TAs can really focus on the content and, and really think about the discussions and things. And also it just it consolidates things because when you try to tell six people to do everything, it's too complicated. So we found it easier for me to just be the command center, the home base for all the live streams. But when I move, we're not gonna be able to do that. And so probably what you'll see we'll probably transition to another platform in terms of our streaming software. Not you. I mean, we'll still be on YouTube to you guys. It won't be a big difference, but the look of it might be a little bit different because we have to transition to something a little bit more simple. That's not as involved. We probably will not be able to do as many slide heavy streams because I won't be around to prepare everything. And so probably I would say in July is probably when I'm going to be moving we're probably going to pivot to more discussion based videos. And then when I'm back, we'll get back to normal. So I want everybody to understand this is not because we're getting lazy or it's just because when I'm moving and I'm going to be on the road and stuff like that, I can't stick to a predictable YouTube schedule. And it's, it's very, very hard to do that and coordinate with all these other people. So we're going to do the best we can. Don't worry. We're still going to stream. We're still going to be doing, all these different things will still be, I'll be on Discord. And I think what I'm probably going to do is when I'm on the road and when I can stream, I will whenever I can. I mean, it'll probably be more like Q and A's or I'll have discussions or talk about art school portfolios, but it'll be stuff that I don't have to do a lot of prep work for. So sorry that we're going to be doing that. But once I get to Utah, once we get settled, 
we'll get back to normal. So I just want you guys to know that <laughs> that's why. It's not because we don't want to do the best we can, because we always want to do the best we can. Let's see. Emily says, sympathies with moving. I know, moving is so, so bad. It's the worst. And I have not moved in so long. Last time I moved, I was like, didn't have kids. <laughs> it was a lot easier to move back then. Cryptic says, I'm a music producer, recently started interest in art. Have to say your videos are immensely helpful. And Fearful Symmetry says, it's about time someone dethroned Proko as a de facto art source on YouTube. <laughs> I know he is really popular. I feel like he probably figured it out way before everybody else. And now he's like at the top of every single search. So that really helps. And Sterling says, never knew simply clicking on your fixed tip video would result in me being part of an art community, growing tremendously as an artist. Yeah, it, wouldn't we wish that all of our clicks did stuff like that? Monique is saying, what is Discord? Okay, well, Discord, let me bring up the slide. Discord is basically a chat forum, and we have all these different channels, and the channels are all organized by topic, and it's really fun in there. And you can post your stuff to get a quick critique from other people. You can have nerdy conversations about which charcoal pencil brand has the thickest lead <laughs> or whatever you guys want to do. It's a big group chat. Yeah, you should definitely join. We have a lot of fun in there. And usually after the stream, I'll go hang out in Discord for a few minutes. And I will do that today because I have time and I actually recovered from the graduation stream like people are actually already telling me right now they're like oh my god we loved the graduation stream so much you should do it every year i'm like yeah but i'm gonna do it with way more prep time next year because <laughs> i put together this stream in two weeks and it was not a good idea to do that i think next time i do it i need like a minimum one month to actually get that going because yeah that even for me i'm a workaholic it was a little bit too much so anyway i'm <laughs> Make sure I plan that stuff a little bit better. And yeah, Discord is really fun. This, this is good, you guys. Peer pressure. Just peer pressure everybody into joining the Discord. Lisa H. is saying Southern Utah. No, I'm going to be in Salt Lake City, actually. But we're going to travel a lot. And I really hope I can release the tutorial soon. Because I shot this Utah tutorial in August last year. And I'm like, oh my God, it's only been almost been a year. This tutorial has been lying around and I just have not been able to have time to get to it as soon as I wanted to. But I'm hoping we'll be able to do a lot of outdoor tutorials when I'm traveling and stuff like that. So this tutorial actually was shot in Southern Utah because we went to all these places like Bryce Canyon and we went to Goblin Valley. And so I'm hoping to share this with you guys pretty soon. Although I don't know if it's going to happen before I move. So we'll have to see what's going on with that. But I'm really hoping to show that with you guys. And Karen is saying, make sure you don't burn out. I'm trying. I really am. <laughs> I'm not always good at not pushing myself too hard. Because as you guys know, that's what I do. But thank you very much. It's a good reminder to make sure that that happens. And Nathan wants to see plain air. You know, if you want to see plain air, look up our Taiwan tutorial and also our China tutorial, because we do a lot of plain air in those two tutorials. So that's going to be really, really fun. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for being here with me, for supporting me, because like we said before, our prof is nothing without you guys. You, you are what makes this what it is. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to head over to Discord for a little bit, not too long because I have a ton of stuff to do. Oh, my God. But thank you to our top Patreon supporters who make this possible. And remember, you can donate anytime. You don't have to wait for the raffle. You can donate as much as you can, because I think as you guys saw earlier, we did not quite hit our goal for Patreon. This Patreon goal, 3000 a month. That will let us break even. We're not doing that yet, though. Our current Patreon is 1238 So any amount you guys can donate is really important to us because I'm hoping that we'll stabilize at some point financially so that I don't have to stress so much about it. Because that, that really is, to me, the, the hardest part about our prof is just, oh, my God, is our budget going to be sustainable? <laughs> because it's really, really hard. So even if you can just give a dollar, it adds up. I mean, we have over 2,000 people on our email list. 
And I would always think to myself, wow, if every person on that email list gave one dollar, our budget problems would be solved. So <laughs> please think about it, you guys, everybody. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I will see you next time.